Hey guys, Paul from Ashton Phoenix. It is new comic book day for the week of November 13th. We're going to get started right now. This episode brought to you by the comic book store, 30 North Main Street, Glassboro, New Jersey, 08028. Come buy some comics. If you like what you see, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, hit that bell on notification so that way that you know that uh, every week this video comes out and you know when it comes out. So, uh, yeah. All right, people, it's Tim from Capes and Scows and the comic book store and probably several other things. Uh, I'm here to talk about trades, so let's do it. I've got Dark Red, Volume 1, Tim Seeley doing weird horror stuff. We all like that. That is uh, Aftershock. I got Screwball, the cartoonist who made the funnies funny. I have a feeling this isn't brand new, but uh, <laughs> it's cool. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be a bunch of uh, older comic strip stuff. But can you kill someone with it? <laughs> oh, man, let me tell you. You can absolutely kill somebody with this. So be careful, kids. Uh, Savage Avengers, Volume 1. This was fantastic. I really enjoyed this book, so I highly recommend that. We got Wonder Twins. Whatever. Does anybody care about the Wonder Twins? <laughs> I'm sure the book's fine, but like, I don't know. If you need some different kind of stories in your life, you could seek out the Wonder Twins. I just like the same silly, stupid stuff. So, Justice League. Uh, this is Volume 4 of the Snyder Run. It is still Snyder. It is. Um, we have the massive Omnibus, Volume 2. Uh, this probably goes up to about Volume 4 of the Old Trades. This is a really cool book. Brian Wood, if you haven't read it. We have Fallen World from Valiant. It's Dan Abnett doing some Rye stuff, so that's got to be good. Uh, he did all your... Really good Guardian stuff. The reason the Guardians are around today is him. First issue was weird, but... First was issue... Okay. First issue was weird, Paul said. Uh, Paul, I got... What is this? La, la Vaz de la Mayo. Vos. La Voz de Mayo Tatarambo. I'm going to go with it's based on a real story because there's a picture of a dude on the back. Uh, he's some sort of guerrilla militant, maybe? Maybe a freedom fighter? Maybe like a really sweet dude? I don't know. This tells me nothing, but uh, it's in English, in case you were wondering. Um, yep. And then we've got The Boys, Omnibus, Volume 5. Yep, 5 of 6. So we're getting to the end of the new trade paperbacks for The Boys. If you're loving that show, you need to get on this. It's a little more gross in the comics. Got away from me there. We got Glow. Versus the Star Primus. I don't remember if this is the first or second volume. I think it's the second. Um, I did read issue one of this. It was good. I'm excited for the next miniseries they do. They got AJ Lee, uh, or AJ Mendez, whatever her real name is. CM Punk's wife, former AJ in WWE, to co-write it. I think that's awesome. That's cool. She wrote a book. I've been meaning to get it. Uh, Teen Titans Go! Uh, weirder Things. Weirder Things. Ugh. Let's rock. Uh, Star Wars Age of Resistance Heroes. This is a bunch of those one-shots thrown together. Um, lots of good writers on this. Tom Taylor, G. Willow Wilson, just to name a few. And we have Tom King's The Vision collected in one big trade instead of two smaller trades uh, for 30 bucks. 12 issues. If you haven't read this, it's amazing. This is what put uh, Tom King on the map. And last but... Absolutely not least, Paul. I love Wolf Cop so much. And I haven't had a reason to say Wolf Cop in a while. Now you can put Wolf Cop in all the videos. Uh, Wolf Cop is fantastic. It is about a Canadian cop. Turns into a werewolf. There's two movies based on it. Uh, they're fun. They're not too gross. Some of the effects are gross. Kids, don't watch it. It's gross. Uh, yeah, Wolf Cop. Please read Wolf Cop. Wolf Cop, great. Wolf Cop make you happy. Other lies involving Wolf Cop. Wolf Cop. Wolf Cop. All right, first up we have Fallen Angels issue number one. And the only reason I read this is because it, I want to see the uh, Dawn of X titles. That's literally the only reason that you give a crap about this book. Uh, it's about Quanon. Nobody cares about Quanon anymore because she's not Betsy Braddock. And this book is going to hopefully get you to care. And it didn't. <laughs> so... <coughs> Uh, she's trying to find her child who now is, is here and being exploited by um, a new person trying to 
uh, uh, become the next big drug dealer. I, I zoned out. I didn't care. Um, I don't care about the group. I don't care about uh, this pairing. Um, they made they made uh, Cable less likable. They made X-23 less likable, and I didn't care about Quinnon to begin with uh, because it's not Bessie Braddock. So, I mean, if you love Quinnon, go for it. All right, first up, we have Punisher Soviet number one. New miniseries. It's Garth Ennis writing The Punisher. It's a max title. If you miss that, you definitely need this. It's written pretty well. Uh, the Punisher is going after some Russians that are oddly trying to go legit, and he doesn't like it. He goes, none of this adds up. And it looks like a ton of people have been getting murdered in his style, but it's not him. Very convoluted story, but you see where it's going, and the setup is really well done. Garth Ennis writing The Punisher is one of the greatest things ever. Uh, you got Jason Burroughs doing the art. Good stuff. I liked it. I recommend it. If you don't like violence, why would you read The Punisher? Next up, we have X-Men issue number two. I tried to figure out what was going on with that. I still don't know. Um, it's weird that the flagship uh, issue or the flagship title of this uh, series and this re-births um, is so oddly ambiguous. Uh, this is basically a Cyclops issue dealing with his sons and his daughters, Cable and, uh, and Hope. And it's such a weird... Uh, interactions like the interactions are uh, like scarily little for big and not like father daughter and that's just creepy um the the uh the situation is a new island has um uh in the wake of or sorry in the wake of x-force issue number one huge reverberations from that issue um a new island has popped up, and Krakoa is literally moving towards it to figure out what's going on. And you have to figure out who this per who this new person is. Are they friend? Are they foe? Are they a little bit of both? And um, at least that part was uh, interesting. Curious to see where that goes. Um, uh, Cyclops uh, trying to be a dad. Uh, it's just weird. Other than that, check it out. Next up, we have Unsacred by Mirko Andolfo. Uh, I didn't know what to expect from this because it's a little cheeky, cartoony style. This is a world where angels and devils live together. I didn't see any regular people at all. And uh, it's a story of this musician devil guy who falls in love with this angel woman. And... Uh, he just can't get lucky. It kind of focuses on him trying to get lucky. Uh, it's silly. Some of the jokes land. Some of the jokes don't. But uh, it's pretty fun. You can tell it's a, a, a passion project that this person wrote and uh, drew. I like the art a lot. Um, yeah. I just think maybe uh, bigger panels maybe. Some of them are just so small. But uh, it, it's pretty good. I wonder if it was like a webcomic at some point because the panels are just a little little wonky. Uh, there are alternate covers to this, and they are not safe for work. Not even close to safe for work. Please don't bring the other covers to work. Why would you bring this to work? That's weird. Where do you work that you would do that? Um, but yeah, the book is good. The book is fun. It's not overly gross. It is some adult humor, though. And uh, I enjoyed it. So check it out. It might be for you. Wolf Cop. Hey, look, books I liked. Uh, Ruby issue number two. Uh, the art and the writing of this is just beautiful. Um, it is still Fall of Beacon. You get to find out a little bit more of uh, how Yang has uh, progressed after uh, the Fall of Beacon and the terrible things that happened to her in that fall. And then you get to learn a little bit of the backstory between Blake and Adam, uh, two major characters in this story. Uh, the art is just beautiful. And the storytelling is pretty good. Um, although this, unlike the first issue, uh, this one is very dependent on the fact that you know who uh, Ruby is and um, that you read the first issue. Uh, but it's definitely worth checking out. All right, Paul, it's time for my pick of the week. Are you excited? Sure. Why would you be? You don't care. I mean, I, I care a little bit. You don't care. I do. I don't think you care, Wolfgang. Make me care. I will make you care. So, my pick of the week is Far Sector. Hey, does that surprise you? 
Yeah, I, I didn't care. You didn't care? No. Oh, geez. Uh, Far Sector was pretty good. It's by N.K. Jemison, I'm going to say. Uh, she writes uh, a bunch of sci-fi novels, apparently. And uh, your artist is Jamal Campbell. The art's really good. The panel layout's pretty sweet. Basically, this is a new Green Lantern character. And she is kind of thrown into a scenario where she's on a planet where a murder has occurred for the first time in like 500 years or something. And no one knows what to do. So she is trying to play, you know, Law and Order over here and figure out this world all at the same time. Uh, it's a lot of setup, but I really like where it's going. This is not going to be for everybody. This is not your Hal Jordan style Green Lantern story. But if you like deeper sci-fi, I really see what she's, uh, the, the seed she's planting here. And I like what it's, I think when it's all said and done, it's going to be really good. But check this out. See if it's for you. It's, like I said, it's not your typical Green Lantern story, and uh, we'll see what happens with it. Hopefully, uh, it stays pretty good. And my pick of the week, um, it is Tales from the Dark Multiverse, Blackest Night, issue number one. Um, after Tim did uh, Death of Superman, what was it, last week? Yeah, sure. Last week? Two weeks ago? Last week. Last week, maybe. Um... I, I decided I want to watch this, read this one. And I, I liked Blackest Night. It was definitely one of the fun series that I've watched. And uh, in this, um, it's the Tales of the Dark multiverse. So in that universe, Sinestro didn't share his power and uh, create the, grain, the the White Lantern core and uh, just kept the power for himself and failed miserably. And this takes place three weeks after the fall of the... Uh, Lantern Corps, all of the Lantern Corps, literally everyone, and the last three people, or the last four people left alive on Earth is half a Sinestro, uh, because uh, he was defeated by the Black Lanterns, but because the White Lantern kept him alive, he's literally half living, half dead, um, and tries to get Dove. If you have watched or read a lot of the um, side stories, a Blackest Night, you understand why Dove is an important character. Uh, Lobo is on a mission to pick up Dove to find out who uh, who picked it, and we find out that person is uh, a fairly important character, and they hatch a plan um, to basically uh, turn the tide of the Black Lanterns. I don't want to really spoil it for you, um, but uh, wow, this is a messed up book. Um, I love Elsewhere titles, um, especially the ones that don't end particularly well. Um, this was a fun one, and um, you should definitely pick this one up. All right, everybody. We got to the end. It's over with. Thank God, right? Oh, man. Uh, Paul will be at Anime NYC along with Elf. If you want to see them, if you want to go up to them and be like, hey, I like an anime, that would be fantastic. Paul loves that. He loves talking at length about yours specific very very specific fandoms like go deep in anime tell him like subgenres and then more subgenres just really get in his face i mean no yeah like just go like this to him and really make him understand how good you your really anime know? is and give him a hug when you're done he loves it he actually loves it don't listen to any of I the mean, the hug is not terrible but everything before that no which is funny because you don't want to hug this man why does he not hug me i don't know i've never felt the urge you have hugged me. Yeah, I didn't have the urge at the time, though. Such a weird concept. It is. I just do things. I, I, I don't understand. Well, well, I guess hugs mean something different to you. I, I guess so? I guess so. But hey, check out Anime NYC. Go up to Paul. Make him understand why you love whatever it is you love. Again, don't do that. Yeah, don't leave him until he understands. Make sure he understands your fandom. Your sub, 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 sub genre. So specific. Please do that. And uh, that's it. Thank you, everybody uh, who's been listening to the podcast. That means a lot to me. Uh, thank you, everybody, checking out the videos on this channel. And, uh, hey, just continue being excellent. Do that. Wolf Cobb.